Hi, I'm Mia and this is Jeremy and this is our retired ambulance. It's a 2011 E350 and it's an ambulance from Quebec and that's why it's yellow. This is the front cab. Come check it out. The fun thing about ambulances is that there's really cool compartments. In here we store our second battery for the engine. We made this long drawer that pulls out completely and we can store all of our seasonal stuff in here. The cool thing about ambulances is also that there are some windows already installed so we didn't have to cut any holes. Um, and this one has a fun like screen door. It opens up like this. For the winter seasons, we just put these Reflectix in the windows so that the heat stays in and it's been doing pretty well. And then we have these handmade curtains that also pull right up whenever we want the sun to come in. This here used to be a compartment for batteries and now we just emptied it completely and this is a great place to store our shoes. This van conversion cost us a total of $20,000 Canadian. The van itself cost us $14,000 and we invested another $7,000 for everything that you see that's inside now. I dreamed about this for five years before actually buying this rig and I wanted to live in a van because of the freedom that I thought it would give me and also the fact of having your own space at 20 years old felt really exciting to me that I had a place that I could call my own and have my own independence for a small price. But that's definitely not exactly the experience I got and I would like to talk to you guys more about that, like the reality of this lifestyle. Alright, so in here we have a bookshelf. We love reading, so there's a lot of those in there. Um, and we also have a harmonium that is stored here. This is a very ancient Indian instrument. We use it to do kirtans, which is a yogic, yogic music mixed with instruments and mantras. It's a great way to meditate. And as a yoga teacher, it's one of my favorite tools. Living in this van for a year has allowed us to save enough money to buy a house but it did come with its downsides. The reality of van life is not what you see online and it is really hard to capture what it actually feels like unless you live through it. Living in 70 square feet with another human being is quite challenging, <laughs> especially during the winter seasons. We did come to Victoria, which is the warmest place in Canada during the winter, but we still needed to stay inside, closed in most of the time, and that really played on our mental health. Being in such a small space that is so compacted, like you're in your bedroom, kitchen, washroom, and dining room, like all at the same time, all the time, there's something that happens in your brain where it just becomes like an endless spiral of <laughs> the sameness and um, it's hard to describe, but it kind of drives you insane. Um, <laughs> it's ki it kind of feels like voluntary jail, <laughs> like, voluntary, like putting yourself voluntarily in jail. Here's our water system. This tap works with a foot pump. That way we're extra conscious of how much water we're using and we're also saving on electricity. And in here we have three water jugs. Two of them are clean water and one of them is gray water and they're each 23 liters. We have a spice rack over here, some storage in here. We also have an emergency toilet there. <laughs> yes, in our kitchen. <laughs> we chose not to have anything permanent on the countertop like a stove because we really enjoy this, this open empty countertop. Since we don't have a lot of space in the van, this becomes a desk, this becomes a craft area, like this is so versatile, this becomes a place where we fold our clothes, and so having like a permanent stove was just not something that we wanted. And we just store our stove down here in our pantry. This is our pantry. It's usually not this organized. <laughs> this usually just houses like all of the food um, all of our utensils, bowls, plates. This is our one and only pan that fits just right in our, our sink. So this is why we chose this one, because it's exactly the dimensions of our sink. 
And then we have a blender, which we can only use when it's a very sunny day, because I'll talk to you guys later about our solar system. And then, yeah, so food. And down here we have our stove, our fresh water supply. So all our drinking water is actually coming from here. It's empty right now, but um, it's powered by an electric pump. In this hole, we have our laundry and other kind of miscellaneous things. We also hook our towels over here. And a little fun thing that we added is these clips. These are actually great for the summer when you have a lot of wet clothes. Over here are two extendable wires or clotheslines, I guess, and they hook up all the way there. So you have like a bunch of clotheslines so that you can dry off your things. Do you want me to connect it? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Living with the bare minimum has really made us feel so grateful for when we do have space and we do have more resources. Van life definitely feels more like a season for me, a chapter in my life, and not necessarily a lifestyle. It feels like it served its purpose. It allowed me to have my independence that I craved and save the money that I wanted to save, but now I am craving space. <laughs> I would recommend this lifestyle to anyone that is low maintenance because this is definitely not a glamorous lifestyle. Um, you have only the bare minimums and you do have to pee in a cup a few times in a week. <laughs> Something that I've learned recently is the power of the mind. When you put your mind to something, you can achieve it. And that goes also for the negative thoughts. When you have thoughts that are heavy or you start to spiral that state is what you're going to manifest outside and your reality is going to look like what is happening inside your head and so living in this van being restrained physically in my space i realized that i have been spiraling a lot more and through that spiraling my environment my my opportunities have been limited and restrained because i feel like that in my head this vision of the van was an idea and I kept thinking about it, kept dreaming about it, and it happened. Just like my negative thoughts when I was in a negative part of my life also kept on happening. So what I'm trying to say is that be mindful of what you're thinking about at all moments. Be mindful of where your mind goes when you're a little bit sleepy. Be mindful about what, how you speak to others in your mind. Do you judge others? Do you, are you sending love to them? Um, all of that plays a huge role on how your life turns out. And so allow yourself to dream big, allow yourself to fake it until you make it, is what I always think of. If I am currently uncomfortable or craving more space, Right now I am craving more space and so I'm allowing myself to visualize and manifest and radiate at that frequency that I would feel, that I would be at when I'm in more space and that way I'm attracting that. Something I've been learning lately is that whatever happens in my head reflects out into my world and so if I have a lot of inspiration, I am dreaming of beautiful things and I'm allowing myself to have really kind thoughts towards other people and towards myself. I notice that my life just becomes brighter and exactly what I want. For example, when I was dreaming about this van, I kept dreaming about it and dreaming about it and then one day I woke up and it was done and I was in the reality that I was dreaming about. This applies also to negative thoughts and so during the winter when I was having a really hard time being in the small space in the cold and I was also sick my whole reality became darker and like the people I was meet were, was meeting weren't as nice either like the my experiences weren't as fresh and exciting and it's because my mental state 
wasn't there yet. And so if you're going through a rough patch right now, allow yourself to dream about your dream reality and devote some time every day to that. And you'll see that one day you'll just wake up and be exactly there. So we actually got this bed custom made. It's a foam mattress that's cut in half. That way we can fold it into a couch mode and then when we want it to be in a bed, it's also great. Um, we also have a foam topper on top so that we don't feel the crack when, it's, when we're laying down. Let me talk to you about the electrical system. Before that actually, we installed a backup camera to make it easier to park this big vehicle. <laughs> This ambulance is actually gasoline, which is quite rare for ambulances. And this is actually uh, what they used to, for the oxygen machines. The air would come out. So we just closed that off and sealed that off so that there's no air coming in or out. So this is my pride and joy. The electrical system when we first started the build was the thing that was extra scary, but we figured it out and you can too. There's three ways to power this system. The first way is the sun. The second way is a shore power receptacle. And the third way is through the alternator of the vehicle when the vehicle is running. So this is the shore power receptacle. Whenever we're somewhere where there's electricity, we can just plug in an extension cord in here. And this is connected to the battery charger. Those two AGM batteries power AC and DC. DC is anything with lights, fridge and uh, the fan and then AC is all of our plugs our extension cord plugs because they go through an inverter and our inverter is a 2000 watt Renogy inverter. I got into minimalism eight years ago I completely got I got rid of all my things and just had a backpack in my bedroom and lived out of my backpack um, my initial reason to do that is because I had a lot of anxiety and I noticed that the amount of things that I had actually like agitated me more. So by downsizing and decluttering, I actually felt so much relief knowing how, what shirts I had, what pants I had, what possessions I had, and it removed so much decision fatigue. Then like a year ago when we moved into the van, Obviously, we need to declutter even more, even though we were already minimalists, we had to declutter even more because it's even smaller, even an even smaller space. But that was quite easy <laughs> because, again, I had eight years of preparation before moving into here. So over here, we have four solar panels. The reason why I can stand on here is because this is made out of aircraft steel. This ambulance has been tested and rolled down cliffs and there hasn't been any damage. It's been intact. Um, so we're going to try that right now. <laughs> you like to take the camera and go like this. <laughs> My philosophy on life is that we are all just preparing for death. The goal of my life is just to find inner peace before that moment happens. And so what stops us from having peace is actually our suffering. And what causes suffering is the fear of death. All of our anxiety and depression is caused from the sphere of death. And so I commit to accumulating as many moments in my day that are full of peace, whether that's asana yoga, chanting, singing, spending time with high quality people, as many moments, like I'm cultivating as, I'm cultivating as many moments as I possibly can so that eventually my life is just 100% peaceful and I can find this ultimate equanimity. On the same topic of anxiety, I also started practicing yoga three years ago to really try to gain control over my life and over my anxiety. This yoga practice then transformed into a yoga business and I also started doing life coaching. And so I guide people in their spiritual journeys 
the way that I wish I had got, gotten guidance when I was going through the thick of it. I also documented this entire van build and also just my personal journey on my YouTube channel, Yogi Ni Sol. I try to be as vulnerable as possible about my experience and kind of remove the stereotype of what van life looks like um, because social media really doesn't give it a accurate representation. So I try to do my part in that way. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here and we release new episodes every single Sunday. So consider subscribing.